Ah, good day and welcome to how to frame generate as fast as possible. Originally penned for a 30 minute long tutorial going into deep depths of how it works. And I thought, sorry, people just want to know how it works. So I'm just going to show you how it works for the most basic of levels. So in Inventor, first thing you need to do, critical, is to go into your application options, go to the content center tab, and then you need to make sure that you've got the right access options set. You're either desktop content or vault server. Chances are you're not vault server or you'd know about it. So make sure desktop content is set. Copy that path to the clipboard, go over to Windows Explorer, paste that path into Windows Explorer, and you need to make sure you've got your libraries there, mate. If your libraries aren't there, you need to go to your Inventor install media, which you had at one point because you installed Inventor, and then launch it and tick the box for desktop content libraries. That'll install them, and then you're good to go. Read. Let's get started with frame generator. This is going to be quick. It's going to be quick. Right, we're going to jump into an assembly. This is going to be the top level of your frame. And there's a number of different ways of making frames, but I'm going to go with the most easiest and convenient way. Uh, so we're going to hit save right off the bat and then uh, give our frame a name. So I'm going to put it into a folder called frame. That's uh, pr pretty uh, original. And I'm going to call the frame top level FR1234. Always give everything in your frame. Every time Inventor asks you to save a file, always give it a unique number. It's really important. Or else the next time you make a frame, you'll end up with the same number and uh, the same file name. And that's not a good place to be. Right, once you've done that, we need to create a skeletal model. The skeletal model is uh, its like the underpants of your framework. It's like a, a bounding box where the frames are going to be placed. So you're going to click create and we're going to create a new skeletal model called FR1234 because that's the name of the top level assembly. So we know which skeletal model goes with which top level assembly. Uh, let's call it SK-0001. And uh, we're going to put it into the same frame folder. And the bomb structure, make sure you set that as reference. Really important. It excludes it from being in the parts list because this thing doesn't exist. Click OK and then click in the empty space. And now we're ready to start drafting up uh, our skeletal model. So I'm just going to create a, like a box section, like a, t a table or something like that or a cabinet. So we're going to click start sketch, uh, click the XY plane, and then we're going to drop down uh, a two point center rectangle. And let's call this uh, width equals, let's make it a, it's a meter by a meter, right? So width equals a uh, thousand millimeters. And then uh, pressing enter is not the best thing to do. <laughs> so I didn't get the other dimension on. Uh, so click dimension on that side, place that, and we'll call this one length equals 1000 millimeters, and then press enter. Read. So that's our, that's our dimensions for our bounding box. Click finish sketch, zoom out a bit. I hate it when it does that. That's really irritating. And then press extrude, and we'll go height. Height equals. 500 all right so we'll, we'll have it uh, thousand by a thousand by 500 and then we'll change the appearance of this to be clear because this is just a skeletal model it doesn't exist uh, and then there's our skeletal model what you can also do and just so you know where we're heading with this this is uh, a framework for the framework so we're, we're going to place frames on the edges so there's going to be a frame member going along there going along there there and all the other edges but if you want cross members uh, or that members that don't go from point to point you can create additional sketches on here mate and go I want to I, I also want a frame from like here going up to here because uh, because I've got my reasons that I'm I'm not prepared to divulge but uh, yeah there, there's gonna be a frame there you can do that not a problem right click return and then click save just uh, it's best to save it as often as possible because it's uh, it's Autodesk and then go to the design tab and then you should have your frame panel here. Click insert frame and providing that you did the thing at the start where the content center needs to be installed and you've checked that it's there, you should get this, a dialog box with all the standards and the placement methods. So there's a whole bunch of different standards you can work with. I'm just going to go with ISO and then you've got all your different channels here. Once you've clicked it and clicked it off, you can press the down arrow on your keyboard to cycle through the different profiles and it just shows you a preview on the right hand side of what they are i mean i'm sure you can read it'll, just, it'll say square section uh, or circular section so i'm going to go with 10799-2 square hollow section and then you can see here that's what it's going to look like pick your size uh i don't know 50 by 50 by 2 and then your material uh, we'll, we'll stick with mild steel if you're going to give it a painted finish you can indeed do that if it's going to be painted black you can go with uh, i don't know smooth black is probably the best one or else you get a weird texture on it so we'll go with smooth black and then you can start clicking your edges to place your frames and there you go that's what it looks like when it places the frame originally it roots it through the middle of the edge all right you can see that it's rooting it right the way through the center line uh, of that uh, that edge and that's because it's picked here you can go like that and then you can bump it up by 10 mil if you want to 
Uh, or you can rotate it by 45 degrees if you want to and put it on the side. So you've got a whole bunch of options there. I'm just going to leave it as uh, diddly default and then we can start dropping frames on the other edges. You can multi-select using uh, drag. So you can do this. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Don't do that if you've got a sketch on the edge. Because <laughs> here we've got a sketch line and a solid edge and it'll put two frames on top of each other and that will confuse the hell out your parts list and uh, it'll, be, it'll throw the weights off, so don't do that. So there's a cross member and then there's the, the other solid edge. There you go. And then you can click OK and then it's going to say create new frame. You're like, oh, I thought I did this bit. No, this is a sub-assembly it's going to create underneath the top level that it's going to organize the frames in. So we're going to get roughly 13 frame members and it's going to, it's going to categorize them all and place them underneath this sub-assembly here. Again, this needs to have a unique number. So we're going to say FR1234 because it's underneath FR1234 dash, um, I don't know, frame dash zero 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 one and then it creates another skeletal model this is just a bit of reference geometry that inventor has to create you've got no input into it you don't change this part at all ever but we still need to give it a unique name so fr1034 dash inv skeletal model or something like that dash zero 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 one and then click ok and that's going to then create another dialog box full of lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of digits <laughs> it's like oh man really more uh this is if you're not bothered just click ok but be aware that if you ever do create another bit of framework using the same profile iso 50 by 50 by 2 you'll end up creating a whole bunch of frames again with the same file names as the one you made right now and that's never a good place to be so if you want to give these unique names unless you're using vault i'm not going to go there you, you, you've got to do this manually so you've got to click the three little dots and then we can start giving this a you <laughs> this is ridiculous i know but uh it is what it is right now uh so we can call this the frame itself dash zero 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 one uh and then what you would have to do to give all the parts their unique numbers is hit save, click this. Yeah, this is a thing. <laughs> this is a thing. I'm not going to do it for every single part, but this is what you would have to do to give them all a unique number. Uh, but there you go. I click OK. It'll then create all the frames, paint them black and drop them in. And there you go. So we've now got FR1234. There's our skeletal model, which controls the edges and the cross member. And there's our sub-assembly called FR1234 frame 0001. And there's all the bits underneath it. And that's your frame. Super. Right, from this point onwards, you can start using the end treatments if you want to. You can turn off your skeletal model if you don't want that anymore. So you can right-click on the uh, the one you made and turn off its visibility. But yeah, the end treatments, you've got a whole bunch of tools here, like mitre. Uh, if you want to mitre something and then put a, I don't know, a 2 mil gap in for a weld, you can click mitre, click the two beams you want to mitre, click apply. And then there you go. There's your there's your mitre with your two mil gap in, and you can just carry on. Boom, boom, bosh, uh, pick, pick, bish, biddly, biddly, badly, boop. There you go. All right, so that's mitering. We've got things like uh, I'm not going to go through them all, but we've got like trim and extend. Uh, we've got trim to frame. Uh, trim to frame is is, is not, I don't like that one. Trim 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 slash extend is quite a nice one. This lets you pick multiple frames in one go so we can pick all of these four up members and then you can orbit it around select the face you want to trim them all back to and it'll trim all four members back to that flat face uh and then uh, yeah they've got notch notch is another good one so if you want to notch that cross member into this upright you can pick that and then that and click apply and it'll cut it back and then it profiles it around that beam which is which is nice if you want to give it a bit extra legs to put some feet on you can do that this is probably just the last one to show click uh, the, the member say how much you want to extend it by say 300 mil and then click okay and then there you go look at that so you can do that on each of the um, you have to do those one at a time unfortunately uh, apply you can't apply and just keep clicking them i don't know why it doesn't let you multi-select that's a that's a thing but uh, you know you know it's uh, eventually they'll get there and event invented later on uh, if you want to remove any end treatments, you can do. You can click remove end treatments, pick the, uh, say that one there, that's got the notch on it, and it'll delete the notch. Uh, each one of the frames is listed as a browser node down here, and you can expand them all and see the uh, the end treatments, which you can delete with frame generator uh, individually, if you want to do that. You can change frames. If you decide, oh man, I've put the wrong size in, you can click change, click the, uh, the cross member, for example, and then you can put in a new size. So we can drop this down to say 40 by 40 by 2. Uh, but it will replace it with a complete new frame and give it a new file name. So if you did spend it, half an hour putting in file names at the start, it'll, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's just uh, undone everything you've done. <laughs> you have to do it again. 
Uh, and there you go. There's frame frame generator. That's very very quick, as fast as I can possibly do. Introduction to how you make frames in the frame generator. From this point onwards, uh, you hit save, and it's good to go. Uh, there's the other things to consider is things like the bomb structure of your frame. So you'd go to uh, tools and then document setting. Not that one. Document settings. Uh, go to bill of materials, and then you have to decide whether or not this is a purchased uh, unit or is it bought in. So is it normal or is it purchased? And that dictates how the bomb behaves in some in some instances and you've also got assemble and then build materials and it'll group all your parts up on the structure tab if you enable it uh, and it combines them all together based on lengths so uh, there's your build materials it'll go your parts list when you place that into a drawing which you can manipulate if you want to and there you go very very quick as possible introduction to frame generator uh, everything is adaptive so if you do go back to your original skeletal model and you decide right oh actually i want to i want to drop this bit lower down and i want to make the uh I want to make the unit a bit longer so we can drop that at 1500 this is completely and fully adaptive so all the frames will update to suit your new sketch or your new your new underpants <laughs> your new boxes uh, but uh, yeah there you go that's uh, that's a very basic introduction uh, for finishing this up for the third time thank you very much uh, if you if you like this video if it helps do press like if you want to see uh, if you want to see a more in-depth one which uh, which will go into things like editing profiles and creating new frames that, that aren't in the list that you might want additional sizes that can cover that kind of stuff. Uh, so let me know in the comments if that's something that you would be interested in. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Doop.